devotion time again. Great to have you with me. Two weeks ago on our devotions, I spoke about being a believer and last week, what it meant to be chosen by God. And today I want to talk about you and I are heirs. Heirs, someone who has inherited. You see, a last will and testament has stated who and what will be inherited. Now, I don't know about you, but I have been a, a, in a number of inheritances and last wills and testament, and it's not about the amount of money, which hasn't been a lot, but it's about knowing that somebody cared for me to such an extent that they wrote my name down in the last will and testament. And now the Bible is full of references to you and I as believers, as chosen ones, that we are also heirs of the Lord. I want to point out Romans chapter 8 verses 16 to 17 from the NIV translation and the following, it says the following, the spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. That's wonderful. We are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his suffering in order that we may also share in his glory. Now, I don't know about you, but this is just mind boggling, blowing my mind that I am an heir of God. And what does it mean? Everything that God is and has can be shared with you and I as is the very essence of him in our lives. Another scripture is in Galatians 4, 7. And Paul writes and he says, you are no longer a slave. You're no longer a slave, but God's child and since you are his child, since you are his child, God has made you also an heir. Isn't that incredible? That God has made you an heir. The first scripture I read was, I'm a co-heir with Christ. In Hebrews 1 verse 2, the writer says that Jesus Christ has been appointed by God to be heir of all. All things, all things. Now, I believe this to be the true word of God, but it just entails too much for my mind to take in. I want us to go back to that scripture, Romans 8 verse 6, where Paul says, if we are co-heirs with Christ, if indeed. You see, here comes a precondition in the last will and testament. Many last wills and testaments will say, my X, Y, Z will inherit so and so if this takes place, X, Y, Z. Now Paul writes and he says, we are co-heirs with Christ if indeed we share in his sufferings. Boom, in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. Here's the precondition. We need to share in his sufferings. I think about this. Jesus suffered so much that you and I might become his children, might become born again, might become inheritors of his glory in his kingdom one day. And yet you and I want to avoid the sufferings that we find in the word of God. If somebody's suffering, you suffer with them. If somebody's sick, you're sick with them. If somebody's hungry, you're hungry with them. You are associating as Jesus associated with those in the world. And when we associate that, when we say, Lord, you suffered for me, I don't mind suffering for you and for your cause because as God the Father took you through and you were triumphant, and the resurrection, so I'll be triumphant as well. I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who loved me, an heir of God. I just want to mention one scripture, and it's just taken and put there for you just to think about 
And if you want to go and study it, it's in Revelation 21 verse 7. But look at this, the final passages of the Bible. Those who are victorious will inherit all this. Go read what all this is. It's in heaven. It's all the goodness of God in heaven. And then I will be their God and they will be my children. You are an heir of God, a co-heir with Christ. Be willing to do whatever God lays on our hearts to share all the pain and the suffering in this world so that we can inherit the glory of his kingdom. Father, I thank you that you help us to become victorious in our lives more than conquerors. And thank you that you prepared an incredible inheritance for your children who believe in you. Thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Sunday soon. God bless you.